All right. So let's dive into four situations where the passive voice structure is common and the recipient of the action is the star of the sentence. Our first situation occurs when a writer or speaker consciously associates with the recipient of an action and assumes the perspective of the recipient. As with all things structurally passive, the recipient is the star. But here we can also feel an alliance between the speaker and the recipient in the overall mood of the sentence. Uh, in this situation, the recipient can be some other or it can be the speaker. This association between the speaker and the recipient is formed in most circumstances because the speaker shares a sense of empathy with the recipient, when not the self, of course, uh, or because the speaker feels personally affected when the action has happened to them, as is the case with these two examples. Now, as you can see, these are both negative situations, and you can sense the speaker's annoyance as the recipient of these actions. This type of negative vibe is very common when we're dealing with this first situation. We can think of this literally as the bothersome reru ra reru, and it's generally saved for those occasions when a situation is abrupt or unanticipated. This is why it wouldn't be typical to use the passive to talk about an early sunset, ruining a marvelous picnic. Uh, sure, it's a pain in the neck, but the sun is always rising and setting on some sort of regular schedule, which makes it hardly unexpected, which makes it hardly a good choice for the passive. Okay, so that's the bothersome reiru ra reiru. The speaker also has access to another reiru ra reiru, when things are a bit more positive and they want to ally with the recipient to talk about that. We call this the benefiting reiru ra reiru. With this one, our recipient is receiving a favor, some sort of goodness, a benefit. Let's take this sentence, for example. Positive, right? If you are running a business where this sort of request would put money in your pocket, then it's clearly beneficial, and you could use the passive to talk about it because you could think of these Swiss tourists as having some sort of impact on you. A second situation where we often see the passive is when it's more desirable for the speaker or writer to communicate with objectivity or distance. This could be because we're not certain of something or because we're speaking in a public forum where we could unwittingly expose ourselves to criticism or because we wish to be non-committal and disassociate ourselves from specificity. Stepping away from decisiveness and directness helps us soften our delivery, keep personal viewpoints and prejudices out of the mix and allows for a certain air of objectivity when objectivity would be wise to project. Let's illustrate with an example. An approach like this affords us the luxury of referring to a universally held idea instead of one that is solely our own, or one that someone else might claim we support because we brought that idea and the person who expressed it into the equation. We avoid making remarks that bring in the who, the action agent, which allows us to focus on the what, which is most important. A third situation where we often see the passive is when the appearance, states, or conditions of things in nature are discussed. So in the case of this wonderful archipelago named Japan, if we were describing its geographic placement with regard to water, we would use the passive and say, and here's another. What the passive is helping us achieve here is allow us to talk about how things are, the structure, the state, or condition of something, the style of something, more than what is happening per se. And by happening, 
If we consider that Japan and the ocean example, what might be considered to be technically happening would be the sea actively surrounding Japan. Of course, no action is taking place. Things just are the way they are. So we're not looking at the scene as if this is acting upon this. We're simply looking at things as they are. This just is. Our final situation arises when discussing abstract ideas, such as societal situations, where the subject is a thing or an abstract concept, uh, that which is without feelings. Humans and animals we assign feelings to and can relate to, uh, the same can't really be said for ideas or things, necessarily. So when we're dealing with something that stretches beyond being easily definable or relatable, we'll often see the passive. As mentioned, societal concerns serve as a good example. Uh, freedom was achieved, let's say, or the right to speak up is valued. Here's an example. Okay, let's wrap this up with one last situation that also falls within the same general category of non-feeling things. It's also very common to see passive structure when new things come to pass, or when referencing an historical occurrence, or a fact that was established in the past, as with these examples. And that is it for a meaning. And uh, in the spirit of Dick Vital, coming up next, structure, baby. Oh, yeah.